Welcome to the course on uh, molecules of motion. And molecules in motion, uh, it's a important part of the physical chemistry syllabus since we deal with the motion of molecules or particles either in the gas phase or liquid phase. So, kinetic theory of gases uh, is one of the most important uh, sections when we are dealing with gases and kinetic theory of gases is one of the most fundamental theories based on which we have a model generated and this model actually relates the macroscopic properties of gas like pressure, volume, temperature, these are the macroscopic properties to some of the microscopic interpretations and these microscopic interpretation is based on the principle or, or, or based on certain assumptions based on which we develop a model and that we model we call as the molecular in the kinetic theory model. So, to begin with uh, this uh, section, let us uh, briefly view the equations or uh, uh, ideal gas, gas law equations. We will not look into the details of it, we will just uh, mention and recapitulate what are the different laws. We have the Charles law, we have the Boyle's law, we have the Avogadro's law, we have the Charles, we have the Dalton's law of partial pressure. What we are going to be looking into, these are something which we are not going to dwell in, but these, all these equations as we know are based on certain observations. What we see here is a macroscopic observation of a gas where we see, say that when the temperature of the gas is held constant, the pressure of the gas is inversely proportional to the volume. Similarly, we have this Charles law where you say that we, we have the observation that when we increase the volume or decrease the volume of the gas, when the pressure is held constant then increase in volume is going to be proportional to the increase in temperature. Similarly, we have the uh, Avogadro's law and the law of partial pressures, Dalton's law of partial pressure, where we are um, equating the total pressure of the gas is, the, is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the ga individual gas, with it, this is considering when we have a mixture of non-reacting gases in a system. So, all these pressure terms which we have, pressure here, pressure here, are these, these quantities, are, quantities are macroscopic properties of the gas. What we will look through the model, the kinetic theory model or molecular kinetic theory of, theory of um, um, uh, model is how we interpret the macroscopic observation in terms of certain uh, outputs or certain results which we derive from the law. So, to begin with, we will start with the mention of these laws and uh, come up to the ideal gas law equation which is obtained from the ideal gas laws P V equal to N R T. What is N here? The number of moles of the gas which we are looking in and we are dealing with the ideal gases. So, the number of moles is nothing but the total number of molecules of that gas divided by the Avogadro number and Avogadro number is given by 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 per mole. So, each of these parameters are microscopic, macroscopic observable parameters which we can measure pressure, volume, temperature and this is the gas constant and that gas constant if we express uh, the other parameters according to the joules then we have 6.3 uh, 8.314 joules per mole kelvin 
So, these are the, uh, this is one of the fundamental things which we will be visiting again when we are develop the kinetic theory model. Before that, we can have another expression for um, the um, ideal gas law, where we are talking about the number of moles in terms of the mass. Total mass of the gas divided by the molar mass gives you this and what is this? This is the total mass divided, uh, if I uh, look into uh, the volume term, if I can get the volume here, then I have the mass by volume, Ma mass by volume is defined as density. So, I can rewrite this equation in terms of the density when I take take the V out here and I can put the M out here. So, I have this expression where I have P M the pressure of the gas into the molar mass of the gas equal to the density of the gas into the uh, um, gas constant into the temperature. This temperature is in Kelvin an absolute temperature scale. So, based on these, these are equations derived on observation. Based on this, we are going to generate our theory, which is actually a model based on certain simple assumption. The, the beauty of this kinetic theory is whatever assumptions we are going to be looking into is from what whatever we observe about a gas. Like the gas laws, there were these equations were developed based on the uh, observations uh, man made. Similarly, based on certain assumptions, very simple assumptions, we come up with powerful conclusions. We deduce powerful conclusions using the kinetic theory of gases. So, kinetic theory gives us a model on which we are going to develop something which is going to be having giving rise to molecular interpretation to whatever we see in the macro scale in terms of the pressure temperature volume as expressed in the gas laws. So, essentially what are the simple assumptions we are going to go into is the gas is consisting of ideal particles. They are all identical particles of say mass m and they are in random motion. They are continuously moving and they are all the movement is in straight line. The motion is continuous and in straight line. And the next one which is another important assumption is the size of the molecules. Here we are talking about molecules, we can uh, sometimes we will talk about uh, term the molecules as atoms, we can call them as particles. So, whenever I mention molecules or atoms or particles, they uh, uh, what I mean is they are all the same. The size of the molecule or the atom or the particle whichever we want to mention is going to be negligible compared to the total volume it occupies. Like size of one molecule which we are looking into is going to be much much smaller compared to the total volume of the gas which it occupies that means it is the uh, volume of the container which it occupies. Also, it is also much less than the average distance they travel between two collisions. When we have number of gas molecules, what happens? Let us see the picture what it looks like. It is something like this, a number of gas molecules are there and they are randomly moving, some are moving this side, some are moving that side. So, they are in a random motion, but remember they are all in a straight line motion. So, when they are in straight line, not only they collide with the wall, this is the wall, if this is the container, then this is the wall of the container, not only they collide with the wall of the container, they collide with each other as well, right. If they are, this is moving this side and this is moving this side, then they are supposed to be colliding. So, the, they are, there are collisions which is taking place, but we are looking also into the collisions of the particles, these are the particles or the molecules or the atoms of the gas when they collide with the surface of the container. Okay? So, this is one thing which we need to understand about the collision. So, this, this is the uh, container which we are looking into. So, this is the container we are uh, specifying these are the molecules, these are the collisions between the atoms which is occurring. Okay? 
So, th these are all identical particles moving in random straight line motion and colliding with each other and also colliding with the surface. The next one which we are going to look into is the next assumption we are th talking about three major assumptions and one of them is being identical particles, next one being the size of the uh, individual particles and then is the assumption that they are they do not interact, they do not have any intermolecular forces which is existing. That means, we are essentially talking about the ideal gas and whenever they are colliding they undergo elastic collision, elastic collision with each other and elastic collision also with the walls of the container. So, the, this el in elastic collision what we assume that the total translation energy uh, kinetic energy of the molecules is going to be conserved. Okay? So, the gas molecules are continuously moving randomly and they are colliding with each other and also with the walls of the container and we assume that the gravity has no effect on the motion of the molecules. Okay? So, these ba based on these three uh, uh, assumptions we are going to derive a model uh, which is going to be interpreting certain things we already know. Suppose why do I say the gas, why do I assume the gas particles have negligible size compared to the distance uh, between the two collisions or compared to the total volume of the gas it occupies in a container? We know that gases are compressible, they are of low density, the number of particles in a, in a certain volume is very low. So, based on these two we have assumed this uh, uh, assumption when in our model. There are no attractive forces, the molecules do not interact, they only collide and these col uh, collisions are elastic collisions or perfect collisions. Uh, so, what is the, what, what do I have this assumption based on? The uh, no attractive forces, the gas molecules never cluster and they fill the entire container. So, based on this uh, observation, we have say, uh, we can say that they do not have any attractive forces or intermolecular forces or interparticular forces. Then we have uh, taken that the uh, gases are continuously moving in a straight line. What reflection do we have in our in, in day to day observation? Ga the gases can easily diffuse, mix, effuse from a container. So, these molecules undergo elastic collisions with the wall and with one another. What, what is the observation which we have? The gas exerts pressure. We do not have any uh, microscopic interpretation of the pressure, but we know that the gas exert pressure. The, the kinetic energy of the gas molecules are proportional to the Kelvin temperature of the gas. This is again based on uh, observation which is uh, postulated in the Charles law where you have the kinetic here we are these two points in fact these two points will be uh, more elaborately discussed when we are talking about the kinetic model the how the kin average kinetic energy uh, of the molecules is proportional to the kelvin temperature and how the gas when they collide with the surface of the walls of the co container give rise to pressure these two things, uh, are these two points are the ones which we have observed. This is from Dalton's pressure law and this is from the Charles law. Based on this two, uh, two observations, we will try to have a molecular level interpretation of pressure and the temperature in the kinetic model. So, you can understand that since we are getting two very important uh, um, uh, concepts generated from the kinetic theory of gases, one is the pressure and other is the temperature. So, how important it can be for, gener uh, for us when we are talking about a gas system or any molecule which is under motion. So, what do we have? We have to uh, for developing the model we need to have some strategy. 
what are the uh, things which we will be looking into? We will visualize the random movement of the particles in a cube, a volume which is cubic having a volume of total volume of V and the particles of the gas are continuously colliding with the, uh, colliding with the surface walls of the container. Based on that what we do? We can find out the total number of collisions that is happening per unit time and that is in fact which is uh, colliding the area A of the volume total V in unit time that means we are special uh, we are uh, specifying that we have a definite volume of the container v and we have a number of molecules which are moving randomly in this cubic container and the, these molecules which are moving in straight line are continuously colliding and these uh, collisions uh, we are going to note how many number of collisions are occurring on a given area of the wall of the container at unit time. Then what do we do? We find out what is the change in momentum of the molecules after the collision. So, first we are interpreting the size, we are defini defining the size, then we are coming to the number of collisions, the particles are moving on the surface of the wall at a given area per unit time. Then we are going to calculate the force it exerts, what is force? Force we are going to be using the Newton's laws of motion. To, uh, to interpret force, force is uh, going to be mass into acceleration. So, we will first fi find out what is the force exerted uh, by the molecules on the wall uh, on collision and that from that we calculate the total change in momentum. Using the uh, uh, third law of uh, motion we will uh, uh, we will newton's third law we will find that the pressure exerted by gas uh, um, by the gas on the wall will be equal to the uh, force exerted by the gas on the wall uh, by the wall on the gas so what we are going to be generating then we are going to find out because we as we have already said we are going to get a molecular interpretation of pressure from the kinetic model. So, we are going to uh, define what, uh, what is pressure from the Newton's law of motion force exerted by the gas on the wall divided by the area and using this we will apply or compare our equation to uh, the uh, macroscopic relation we have of PV equal to nRT for an ideal gas. So, let us uh, summarize what we are looking into, we are going to define the volume of the container we are going to define the number of molecules contained in this container and then we are going to number uh, in, uh, find out what is the number of collisions which is taking place on a unit area of this volume per unit time. Then we calculate the change in momentum and from the change in momentum uh, uh, during the collision with the wall we find out the force exerted and from the force we find out the pressure and uh, which is exerted by the gas on the wall by divided by the area on which it is hitting. So, from this we get the pressure. So, these are the strategies which we have going to uh, employ to um, develop the uh, model which we are going to have. So, here we have already uh, discussed this that pressure is equal to force by unit area. What is force? Rate of change of momentum, rate of change of momentum on collision with the surface or the wall of the container. So, total change in total change in momentum when with the particles are colliding, what is going to be the total change in momentum? Change in momentum per one collision multiplied by the total number of collision that is happening in a given time t or delta t. Okay? So, we are interested in total number of uh, change in total change in momentum that will be equal to the change in momentum per collision multiply by the total number of collisions that is taking place in a given time delta t. Okay? So, based on this if we have to now find out what is going to be the total uh, change in momentum per one collision. Then we have to find out how many collisions are happening in, uh, in unit time delta t. Okay? So, 
So let us visualize this. We have n number of molecules contained in a cubic container like this, which is length L. Since it is a cubic container, all sides have length L. And each of the ga gas molecule, there are number of gas molecules contained in this. And each of this gas molecule has a mass m. They are moving with the velocity v. So velocity as you know is a vector. So, velocity has can be resolved in three components, the x, y and z. So, we have the three components of velocity x, y and z. What we are going to be looking into is the uh, velocity, uh, a resultant velocity after we have resolved the component into uh, three parts and this is the resultant one. But let, let us not go into the resultant one just now. Let us only look into concentrate only the movement of the molecules and x direction. So, this is the x direction which we have. We are looking into the movement of the molecules or particles or atoms only, only in the x direction and all are moving towards the wall. This is the wall or this is the wall which you can look into. Okay? So, all particles which are moving towards the wall x will have the velocity v x that is how we are going to interpret. And when they uh, come and um, so most of the molecules which is with, with the velocity v x is moving towards the wall A and after collision it moves back in the opposite direction with the velocity minus v x. So, if I have any reference point here, if it is hitting here with the velocity v x, then after collision it is going to be reverted back, reflected back with the velocity minus v x if this is my reference. Similarly, if I this is my reference, then after collision with the wall with velocity v x, it is going to be reflected back. Whenever we have a reflection back in, in the opposite direction, we denote it by the minus sign. This minus sign in, indicates that the it is a bounced back um, particle. Okay? So, what we have, let us consider a single particle moving with the velocity v x, which is parallel to the x axis and moving towards the wall say A, that is in the right hand side. After collision with the wall A in the right hand side, it is reflected back in the opposite direction with the velocity minus v x. So, what will be the change in momentum? Linear momentum is nothing but mass into the velocity. So, the uh, linear change in momentum of the particles that are moving in the x direction hitting the wall at the right hand side will be the linear momentum will be on the far forward x direction will be m v x and the linear momentum of the particle that is bouncing back after collision will have minus m v x. So, for each collision, so this is only for one particular mass um, mo molecule we are talking. For each collision, what will going to happen? The change in x component of the momentum of the particles or molecules is going to be what? This is the forward and this is the backward and it's the difference is going to be minus. So, what is the total momentum, a change in momentum which we have in the x direction? This is the uh, change in momentum after collision with the wall in the right hand side. So, the total change in momentum is going to be 2 m v and x represent the direction we are considering. And we are assuming the y and z uh, components are unchanged. So, what we are looking here? We are looking at the wall, we are having the particles which is colliding with the wall with in the x direction parallel to the x direction wall is on the right hand side, they are moving with the velocity v x and when after collision they are going to be reverted back with the uh, velocity minus v x. So, total change in momentum for one particle will be equal to 2 m v and x direction uh, in the x direction it re, uh, represents the velocity v x. Am I clear? Okay. 
so the total number of molecules uh, we have in the um, in the collision with the wall in delta time t it needs to be found out so how do we find out the total number of collisions which is happening so what we are looking into we are looking into the total number of there are n number of molecules that are colliding with that uh, in time delta t so here we have the uh, time interval delta t the total change of momentum uh, of the particles or molecules colliding with the wall in delta t will be what the total change is in the momentum for one molecule in the total number into the total number of uh, molecules that reach the uh, wall of the container at delta t time so tot what we have this is the change in the momentum of one particle after collision and now we need to know the total number of molecules that reach the interval uh, the wall in the interval delta t so how do we find that out for that we need to consider a section of the container this is the wall it is colliding and this is the area which we are looking into on collision now if i imagine a container of uh, a portion of this uh, container where only this part particles are moving uh, only going to all these particles which are contained in this section of the uh, volume which we have considered are reaching the surface or the walls then the rest of it is going to be not included in this within the uh, container which is going to reach the wall so what is the total number of molecules that reach the wall since particles are moving with the velocity uh, vx then what how do we find out whatever the particle uh, whatever the uh, number of molecules are existing within the distance what is the distance this is the distance which we are looking into distance is uh, 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 velocity is distance by time so for finding out distance we know it is going to be velocity into time so my time is delta t so with within uh, moving with the velocity of vx so this is the distance i'm going to have within which we are going to have observe the molecules which are coming towards the wall a the total number of particles that reach the, uh, within the distance and strikes the uh, wall uh, a is going to be all the particles which are contained in this right so as it follows the area is a the number of molecules traveling towards the con container in uh, in the volume v the volume element we going to have is this is the distance and this is the area so the total volume element which we are looking into it's a volume element in uh, a confined space of the total uh, volume v in which we are going to be uh, having the molecules which is that is reaching the wall now again we have to define the uh, another term we know the number of molecules uh, number of moles of a particle in a definite volume gives the density of the num uh, particle or a concentration of the particle similarly if i ha have to find out the total number density the den number density is total number of uh, particles and total number moles of the particles uh, um, in the container multiplied by the avogadro's number in the total volume gives you the number density you should remember what we are going to be uh, we should remember that this are the two factors i'm going to uh, keep repeating every time this is the volume element volume element is nothing but the a on which the area on which uh, we are having the uh, lo location of interest in the wall and this is the distance in wi within which we are looking in the molecules to be striking so within this distance and within this area so the total volume element i have de determined is this and, and the, again we, we need to find out the number of molecules which is contained in this uh, total volume of the gas if the total volume of the gas is v then the number of molecules which we are having is going to be total moles into the avogadro number this will give you the number density of the particles so the number density total number of particles in uh, or molecules contained in this volume element this will be the number density into the volume element right
Now, when we are looking into a uh, space of within the distance uh, a delta t and the area hitting surface a, then within this area what are the total number of molecules? If I have total number of molecules say n, how many will be moving towards the uh, wall and how many moving will be moving uh, away from the wall? By uh, it is if you take a snapshot of time, if you look into it, we will say, say since it, the, all the molecules are equally probable to move in any direction x, y, z. So, we will see by uh, laws of probability, we will have only half of the molecules moving in the uh, right hand side and the other half will be moving towards the uh, left hand side. So, the average number of particles or molecules that will be traveling to the right hand side wall which are contained in the volume element A into the d x v d x uh, d v d t. So, uh, total number of uh, particles which are going to be reaching the walls uh, surface of the container uh, in delta time t will be nothing but half of the total uh, number density which we have into the total volume element. The total change in momentum in time delta t will be what now? What is the total change in momentum? The change in momentum per one collision into the total number of collisions that is taking place and all the particles which are coming towards the right hand side wall are supposed to be colliding. So, this is the number of molecules that will uh, generate the collision. So, this is going to be the collision which is going to number of collisions which is going to taking pl uh, take place. So, this will be multiplied by the change in momentum for on one particle to give you get us the total change in momentum. So, now I substitute this and try to manipulate. What is this? This is uh, the multiplication of these two, the number density into the uh, volume element which we are looking into. Half comes from only uh, um, probability of only half of the molecules contained in volume element this moves to the right hand side and this is the total change in momentum for one particle. So, if I can rewrite this, this is what I have re rewritten, what you see? Uh, here, here you get the two cancelled off, the two gets cancelled, then you have the mass 2 into m into the Avogadro number into this is the volume element divided by the total volume, this is the total volume of the container. So, if I can rewrite this, I we get an expression uh, in terms of m, where the molar mass can be written as the mass of the gas into the Avogadro number. So, now we come to the term which we are looking into is force, a uh, pressure, this force per unit area force is the rate of change of momentum. So, we have already uh, calculated what the momentum is. So, total change in momentum is this. So, if we want to find out now the pressure, we have to now talk about pressure. We have found out the total change in momentum. Pressure is force per unit area and force is nothing but rate of change of momentum. So, we uh, substitute this and the rate of change of momentum will be uh, given by whatever the momentum we have obtained total momentum divided by the time. And if this is the expression we have for rate of change of momentum that will be divided by the area will give you the pressure of the gas which we have generated. So, the pressure of the gas is the rate of change of momentum which we have generated divided by area. We have this and from this we can see that when we have generated the expression for pressure, this expression of pressure is something similar to what we have in the equation of state for an ideal gas. So, I hope you have understood how we have got this. Uh, in the pressure in terms of the total rate of change of momentum, 
divided by area, this is the force which we have calculated in previous slide, divided by the area, area gets cancelled. So, what we are left with is number of moles into the molar mass into V square by total volume. So, the total this volume is the total volume of the container of the cube. And here we let us uh, remember we have to uh, talk about what this V x means, we are talking about the velot velocity component uh, of the particle in the x direction parallel to the x direction, but which is po the particles are possible to be um, having moving in a x, y and z direction, right. Okay. Thank you.